Mr. Chairman, on behalf of the International Foundation for Electoral Systems, IFES, I wish to thank you, your colleagues, and your staff for holding this hearing today. It could not have come at a more opportune time. Uh, nearly 20 countries in Africa are holding elections in 2010. Uh, we have uh, included in our region statement um, to you uh, with those elections uh, that are scheduled for this year in, in, in Africa. As you know, IFS is the premier organization providing professional support to electoral democracy. Since its founding in 1987, IFS has worked in more than 100 countries around the world, striving to promote citizen participation, transparency, and accountability in political life and civil society. Democracy, Mr. Chairman, and governance work, in my opinion, is a foundation on which all other aspects of U.S. foreign policy in Africa can be built. If you have a country with a strong democratic institution, I believe that provision of aid will be more effective, violence will be less common, and human rights will be more respected. Mr. Chairman, the right to vote <coughs> is enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. If governments are accountable to their own people through elections, everyone will benefit. Mr. Chairman, when an election in Africa is, draws international attention, it is very seldom good news. For example, elections in Kenya fuel violence that left more than 1,500 people dead and about 300 people displaced, while elections in Zimbabwe suffered from massive fraud and brutal abuse. In Sierra Leone and Ghana, on the other hand, the tense, highly contested elections did not degenerate into violence. These elections have become historical landmarks instead for their credibility and peacefulness. Many countries that experience field elections, such as Kenya and Zimbabwe, share a number of similarities. The incumbents in these countries exploited their positions of power for material gain and ran for re-election. Years of misrule, however, gave rise to a popular and determined opposition. To prevent themselves from losing power to the opposition, the incumbents compromised the independence of the electoral commissions and the sanctity of the electoral process. The extremely close results in Zimbabwe led to a brutal government crackdown, while that in Kenya also led to a widespread violence. Mr. Chairman, let me quickly point out that this violence, when you talk to the citizens of those countries, the, the citizens are always calling for more um, transparency elections and not to abandon electoral democracy. An impartial and professional electoral management body could have prevented this violence or at least reduced its likelihood. Sierra Leone and Ghana share many of the opposite characteristics leading to successful elections in both countries. The presidents of Sierra Leone and Ghana could not run for another term, so the incumbents had no direct stake in the election. Moreover, the electoral commissions were relatively independent enjoyed the support and engagement of the various stakeholders and demonstrated their capacity to run elections. As a result, the electoral, the electoral commissions were able to conduct relatively good elections, resulting in those two cases, peaceful transfer of power. What are some of the lessons learned from uh, these uh, difficult and successful elections? Some of the diff lessons learned, Mr. Chairman, uh, electoral fraud and interference are less likely when an electoral management body one is one independent in budget, tenure, and opinion, professional and capable of effectively implementing a credible electoral process, support by the various inter stakeholders. When attention is focused on the electoral management body and effective implementation of the electoral process, it is more likely that the process will run its course without significant intervention. When an incumbent is running for re-election and the electoral management body lacks independence, the process is more likely to be manipulated. Where poverty is widespread, but leaders flaunt their ill-gotten wealth, the opposition can mount effective mobilization. Where the population is polarized by antagonistic mobilization of support, elections are more likely to be rigged in favor of the incumbent with a very high probability of electoral violence. Where the electoral dispute resolution mechanism is robust, aggrieved, parties will be less likely to resort to violence. 
Mr. Chairman, IFS has a few recommendations um, to you as policymakers and to the administration. And these recommendations, my chairman, are very simple. Provide assistance throughout the electoral process because elections do not begin and end on election day. Elections, as like democracy, are a process but not an event. If any stage of the electoral cycle is ignored or manipulated, the entire process could fall apart. Thinking long term and providing strategic assistance contributes to much more successful and peaceful elections. Some of the other recommendations, Mr. Chairman, include, first, special attention should be paid to how electoral management bodies are appointed in Africa. Second, during the registration process, assistance should be given to the electoral management body to clearly and fairly define procedures. Third, during the campaign period, assistance should be given to the electoral management body to establish binding campaign codes of conduct along with the legal power to enforce them. Fourth, throughout the process, the electoral management body must be helped to develop and carry out effective civic and voter education. Fifth, electoral management bodies must be assisted in accredited domestic and international observers. Sixth, assistance must be given to the electoral management body to establish an impartial and effective dispute resolution system prior to the elections. Finally, Mr. Chairman, Countries should not be stripped of the electoral assistance after conducting a series of successful elections. This is particularly true as elections have become closer and more contentious in recent years. While this represents a welcome spread of multi-party democracy, it also represents an increasing risk of conflict. Kenya has made this risk painfully clear. Even countries such as Ghana and South Africa, however, which are viewed as bastions of democracy in Africa, should not be written off in terms of assistance. Assistance could help these countries further consolidate their democratic gains and assume a greater leadership role in the continent. Mr. Chairman, I thank you very much for holding this hearing, and I look forward to questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Eidman.